Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucy B. Hamilton Amphitheater. My name is Danielle Henrici. I'm the Director of Education here at the Fenimore Art Museum and the Farmers Museum, and I am also the Founding Artistic Director of Bloomer Globe Theater. On behalf of the entire cast and crew, we are so thrilled that you are here with us this evening. I would also like to thank the entire cast and crew for their incredible hard work, and I would like to thank all of the amazing sponsors and donors without whom we could not do any shows at all. So, Lucy B. Hamilton herself, the Clark Foundation, the Oswego County Board of Representatives, New York Central Mutual, Melinda Harden and Lou Alstadt, and Dr. Richard Sternberg. If we could, a round of applause for all of them. We are very, 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 very grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy yourselves this evening, please go on Facebook and like Glimmer Globe Theater's page. And if you really enjoy yourself and you are so inclined, we would love it if you would leave a review. It really helps us get the word out. And uh, the last thing I'd like to say is thank you so much for supporting live theater. It, uh, it, it's a wonderful thing and it means a lot to all of us here on stage who are so passionate about it and we're grateful that we get an opportunity to share it with all of you. So, without further ado, I would like to give you William Shakespeare's Othello. Ha! Never tell me! I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Rodbridge will not hear me. Thou toldst me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant off cap to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. The key is loving his own pride and purposes. Non suits my mediators. But since, says he, I have already chose my officer. What was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician. One Michael Cassio, a Florentine that never set a squadron in the field, nor in the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. We have paddled without practice as all his soldiers hit, but he, sir, had the election. And I, whom his eyes to see the proof, the Rhodes, Cyprus, and another grounds Christian and heathen. I must be believed and calm. He, in good time, must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his worship's ancient. By heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. Mark, no remedy, tis the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, and not the old gradation each second is to the heir to the first. I would not follow him then. Well, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, and our all masters cannot truly be followed. You shall mark many a duteous and me cooking maid, the doting on his own obsequious bondage, wears out his time much like his master's ass. For not but provender, and when he's old, cashier. With me such honest knaves. Others there are who, throwing the shows of service to their lords, do well thrive by them. And when they have lined their coats, do themselves homage. These fellows have some soul, and such a one do I profess myself for sir. It is as sure as you are Rodrigo, or I the more, I would not be Iago. Following him, I would follow myself. Heaven is my judge, not I, for love or duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the nat native act and figure of my heart and compliment external, mm, tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for daws to peck it. <laughs> I am not what I am. What a full fortune does the thick lips owe if he can carry it thus. He called her father. Proclaim him in the streets and sense a kinsman. Here is her father's house. I'll call aloud. <clears throat> what ho, Brabantio? Senor Brabantio! Ho! What ho, Brabantio? Thieves, thieves, thieves! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags! Thieves! Thieves! What is the reason of this terrible summit? What is the matter there? Senor, is all your family within? Are your doors locked? Why, wherefore ask you this? Soon, sir, you're wrong! Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is topping your white ewe! For shame, put on your gown, arise! 
Arise! Or else the devil will make a grandsire out of you! Arise, I say! What? Have you lost your wit? Most reverend senor, do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Rodrigo. The worse for welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt about my door. In honest plainness, thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. And now, in madness, being full of supper and distempering draughts, upon malicious bravery dost thou come to start my plan. Sir, sir, but sir. Thou must need be sure. My spirit and my place have in them power to make this bitter taste. Patience, good sir. What tellst thou me of robbing? This is in this. My house is not a grave. Most grave, Brabantio, in simple and pure soul, I come to you. Zeus, sir! You are one of those that will not serve God or the devil, bid you. What profane wretch art thou? I am one, sir, who comes to tell you your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain! You are a senator. Yes, thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Sir, I will answer anything, but I beseech you, your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a gross revolt, tying her duty, beauty, wit, and fortunes in an extravagant and wheeling stranger of here and everywhere. Straight satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike on the tinder hole. Give me a paper. Call up my people. Fly us, I blame. Farewell, for I must leave you. See, not meat nor wholesome to my place that be produced, as if I stay, I must against the moor. In which regard, though I do hate him as I do hell pains, yet for necessity of present life, I must show an outward flag and sign of love. It is indeed but sign that you shall surely find him lead to the Sagittary to raise and search, and there will I be with him. So, farewell. Rodrigo. Are they married, think you? Truly, I think they are. Ah, heaven! I think I can't discover him. If you please, to get good guard and go along with me. Great! Lead on in every house I'll call. I may command it most. Get weapons, ho! And raise some special officers of night. On, good Rodrigo, I'll deserve your pains. So in the tree before I've slain men. Yet do I hold it very stuff of the conscience to do no contrived murder. I like iniquity sometimes to do me service. Nine or ten times I thought to have yurked him here under the ribs. Tis better as it is. Nay, but he prayed me to spoke such scurvy and provoking terms against your honor that would... What little godliness I have, I did full hard forbear him. But I pray you, sir, are you fast married? Be assured of this, he will divorce you. Or else put upon you what grievance and restraint the law, with all his might to enforce it on, will give him pain. Let him do his spite. My services which I have done the Signore shall out-tongue his complaints. Tis yet to know. I fetch my life and being from men of royal siege, and my demerits may speak unbonneted to as proud a fortune as this that I have reached. For no, Yago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona, I would not my unhoused free condition put into circumscription and confined for the sea's worth. But look, what lights come yon? Those are the raised father and his friends. You are best go in. Not I. I must be found. My parts, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it day? Jennifer, take no. <laughs> the servant of the duke and my lieutenant, the goodness of the night. Upon you, friends, what is the news? The duke does greet you, General and requires your haste, post-haste appearance, even on the instant. What is the matter, thank you? Something out of Cyprus, says I may divine. It is a business of some heat. You are hotly called for. When being not at your lodging to be found, the Senate hath sent about three several quests to search you out. Tis well I am found by you. I will but spend a word here in the house and go with you. Ancient, what makes he here? Faith, he tonight hath boarded a land carriage. If approved lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. <laughs> he's married. To? Married to 
Come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for. Miss Perfaggio, be advised, General, he comes with bad intent. Hola, stand there! Senor, it is the Lord! Down with him! Stay! You, Roderick, don't come, sir, I am for you. Keep up your bright swords, for the dew will rust them. Good Senor, you shall command more with years than with your weapons. Oh, thou foul thief! Where hast thou stoned my daughter? Damn, there's no one. Thou hast enchanted her, for I'll refer me to all things of sense. She in chains of magic were not found. Whether a maid so tender, fair, and happy, so opposite to marriage that she shunned the wealthy curled darlings of our nation, would ever have to incur a general mock, run from her guardage to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou, to fear, not to delight. I therefore apprehend and to attach thee for an abuser of the world, a practicer of arts, inhibited and out of warrant. Lay on the body. If you do resist, I'm doing that as peril. Hold your hands, both you of my inclining and the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. Where will you that I go to answer this for charge? To prison, to fit time of law and course of direct session, call thee to answer. What if I do obey? How may the Duke be there with satisfied whose messengers are here at my side upon some present business of the state waiting to bring me to him? Tis true, most worthy senor. The Duke's in council, and your noble self, I'm sure, is called for. Ha! The Duke in council in this time of night. Bring him away! Minds, not an idle cause. The Duke himself or any of my brothers of the state cannot but feel this wrong as true their own. For if such actions may have passage free, bond slaves and pagans shall our statesmen be. There is no composition in these years that they can credit. Indeed, they are disproportions. My letters say 107 galleys. And mine 140. And mine 200. Yet do they all confirm. A Turkish fleet and sailing up to Cyprus. Nay, it is possible enough to judge, but I do not so secure me in the era, but the main article I do approve in fearful sense. Hmm. Now what's the business? The Turkish preparation makes for Rome. And how say you by this channel? Yeah, this cannot be, by no assay reason. It is a pageant to keep us in false state. When we consider the importance of Cyprus to the Turk, we must not consider him so unskillful to leave Vegas which concerns him first. Nay, in our confidence, he's not the road. Here is more news. The Ottomites, rapidly gracious, steering in due course for the Isle of Rhodes, so they're enjoying some of the master fleet. Ah, so I thought. How many did you guess? Of 30 sail, now they do with them. The doctor's course is bearing with 30 years for purposes for Cyprus. So it's certainly not for Cyprus. Here comes Fervantio in the Valley of Boa. <laughs> Valiant Othello, we must straight employ you against the general enemy Ottoman. I did not see you welcome, gentle senor. We left your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours. Could your grace pardon me? Neither my place nor honor hair of business has raised me from my bed. Nor doth the general care take hold on me. For my particular grief is of so floodgate in or barren nature that it had gluts and swallows other sorrows, and it is still in its hope. Why, what's the matter? My daughter, my daughter! Dead? Aye, to me! She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicine but of mouth banks. For nature, so preposterously to err, be not the fisher blind or lame of sense, sons of witchcraft could not! Whoever he be that in this foul proceeding had thus beguiled your daughter of herself and you of her, the bloody book of the law you yourself shall read in a bitter letter after your own sense, yea, though how proper son stood in your action. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man, this moor, 
Who now, it seems, your special mandate for the state affairs hath hither brought? We are very sorry for it. What in your own part can you say to this? Nothing, but it is so. Most potent, grave, and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken away this old man's daughter, it is most true. True. I have married her. The very head in front of my offending hath this extent no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. For since these arms of mine have seven years pith, till now some nine moons wasted, they have used their dearest action in the tented field. And little of this great world can I speak, more than pertains to feats of broil and battle. And therefore little can I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet by your gracious patience, I will a round unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjurations, and what mighty magic for such proceeding I am charged with all. I won his daughter. A maiden, never bold, of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blushed at herself. And she, in spite of nature, of years, of country, credit, everything, to fall in love with what she feared to look on, it is a judgment made and most imperfect that will confess perfection so could err against all rules of nature. I therefore vouch again that with some mixture powerful of the blood or some dram conjured to this effect, he brought upon her. To vouch this is no proof without more certain and more overt test. But Otho, speak. Did you by indirect enforced courses subdue and poison this young maiden's affection? Or can it by request, and such a fair question as soul to soul affordeth? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the Sagittary, and let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, but trust the office I do hold of you, not only take away, but let your sentence even fall upon my life. Well, that's Desdemona hither. Ancient, conduct them, you best know the place. And till she come, as truly as to heaven, I do confess the vices of my blood. So justly to your great ears, I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love, and she in mine. Her father loved me. Oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life. From year to year, the battles, sieges, the fortunes I had passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days, till the very moment that he bade me tell it. Wherein I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hair escape to the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery. Of my redemption thence, importance in my travels history, wherein of trees vast and deserts idle, rough quarries, rocks, and hills whose heads touch heaven. It was my hint to speak. Such was the process, and of the cannibals that each other eats, the anthropophagi and men whose heads do grow beneath their. <laughs> this to hear would Desdemona seriously incline, but still the house of fairs would draw her thence, whichever as she could with haste dispatch, she'd come again, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith. Twas strange. Twas passing strange. Twas pitiful. Twas wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, and yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bid me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story and that would woo her. Upon this hint, 
I spake. She loved me for the dangers I had passed. And I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. I think this tale would win my daughter too, good Brabantia. <laughs> I pray, hear her speak. If she confessed that she was happy for her, destruction on my head. My bad blame light on the man. Come hither, gentlemen, mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hither to your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess you to the more my lord. God be with you. I have done. Please, your grace, on to the state affairs. I had rather to adopt a child and get it. Come hither, more. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already with all my heart, I will keep from thee. For your sake, Jewel, I am glad it's so. I have no other child, for thy escape would teach me tyranny to hang clogs on them. I have done, my lord. I humbly beseech you, proceed to the affairs of state. The Turk for the mighty preparation makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And although we have there a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. You must therefore be content to slaughter the gloss of your new fortune with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. The tyrant custom, most grave senators, hath made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice-driven bed of down. I do agonize a natural and prompt alacrity I find in hardness. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife, due reference of place and exhibition with such accommodation and resort as levels with her breeding. Be it a father. I'm not having so. Nor I. Nor I. I would not there reside to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding lend your prosperous ear and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. What would you, Desdemona? that I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world. My heart subdued, even to the very quality of my lord. I saw a fellow's visage in his mind, and to his honor and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I a heavy interim shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going, the affair cries haste and speed that must answer it. With all my heart. <clears throat> At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he, our commission, shall bring to you. 
Is such things out for quality and respect as stuff in portrait? So please, Your Grace, my ancient, a man who is of honesty and trust, to his conveyance I assign my wife, with whatever needful your good grace may think to send after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And noble senor, the virtue no delighted beauty lack. Your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Adieu, brave Moor. Use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moor, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father, and may be. My life upon her faith. Honest Iago, my Desdemona must I leave to thee. I prithee let thy wife attend on her and bring them back in the best advantage. Come, Desdemona, I have but an hour of love, of worldly matters to attend to. We must obey the time. Sayest thou, noble heart? What will I do, thinkest thou? I go to bed and sleep. I will incontinently drown myself. <laughs> thou dost, I shall never love thee after. Thou thou silly gentleman. It is silliness to live when to live is torment, and then have we a prescription to die when death is our position. Ah, villainous. I have looked upon this world for four times seven years, and since I could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury, I never found man who would love himself. What should I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond, but it is not in my virtue to amend it. Virtue? A fit. It is in ourselves that we are thus or thus. Our bodies are our gardens, to the which our wills are gardens, so that if we plant nettles or so, let us, whether it be sterile with idleness or manured with industry, why, the very power and corrigible authority of that lies in our wills. The balance of our lives at that one scale of reason, the poise another of sensuality, by the blood and baseness of our natures, would conduct us to the most preposterous conclusions. But we have reason to cool our raging emotions, our carnal stings, our unbitted lust, whereof I take it this that you call love to be a sect of science. It's pretty much me! It is a, a lust of the blood and a permission of the will. <laughs> be a man. Drown myself. Drown cats and blind puppies. I have professed me, my friend, and I confess me knit to thy deserving with cables of perdurable toughness. I would never better stead thee than now. Put money in my purse. Follow thou the wars. Defeat thy favor with a usurped beard. I say, put money in my purse. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love to the more. Put money in thy purse, nor he his to her. It was a violent convention, and now shalt see an answerable sequestration. Put but money in my purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. Fill thy purse with money, the food that to him now is as luscious as locusts, Shout to him shortly, be as bitter as Colloquin Vita. She must change for you. When she is sated with his body, she shall find the error of her choice. She must have change. She must, therefore, put money, money in, in my purse. purse. <laughs> thou wilt needs damn thyself. Do it a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money thou canst. If sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell. Thou shalt enjoy her, therefore make money! <laughs> a pox on drowning thyself is clean out of the way. Seek thou rather to be hanged encompassing thy joy than to be drowned and go without. Wilt thou be fast to my hopes if I depend on the issue? Be thou assured of me. Go, make money. I have told thee before, and I retell thee again and again. I hate the more. If thou canst cuckle him, does thyself a pleasure me a sport? There are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered. 
Traverse, go, provide thy money. We shall have more of this tomorrow. Oh, you. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. I'll be with thee for times. Go to, farewell. <laughs> Do you hear, Rodrigo? What say you? No more talk of drowning. Do you hear? I am changed. Go to, farewell. Put money enough in your purse! I'll go sell all my land! <laughs> Lest I ever make my fool my purse. I hate the more for he is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that would seem to be so. It holds me well. Better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio is a proper man. Let's see him now. To get his place and bloom up my own fortune in double knavery. How? Ah, let me see now. I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. What from the cape that you discern at sea? Nothing at all. It's a higher up flood. I cannot twix the heaven and the main with sky of sail. He thinks the wind has spoke aloud at land. Never a full of blast took our battlements. <laughs> if that the Turkish fleet be not in shelter or bay, they are drowned. Lose lads, our wars are done! No, no. <laughs> the desperate tempest has so banged the Turks that their design that halts. A noble ship of Venice has seen a grievous wreck and sufferance on most part of their fleet. A Michael Cassio has come on shore, the Moor himself at sea. I am glad I am. It is a worthy governor. I have served him, and the man commands like a full soldier. Let's do the seaside home, as well as to see the vessels that have come in, as to throw our eyes to brave us all. Hey! Hey! Oh! hey! hey! To see the valiance of this warlike isle, it so proved the more. Oh, let the heavens grant him defense against the army. I hope to save it for the governor. If they do destroy their shot of courtesy, our friends at least, I pray you, sir, go forth. Give us the truth, who tears that arrived. Good, good lieutenant. Uh, is your general wife? Most fortunately, he hath achieved a maid that paragon's description and wild fame. Uh, How now? Who is put in? Tis one of Yago, ancient to the general. Uh, has had most favorable and happy speed. Tempests themselves, high seas, howling winds, as having sense of beauty do omit their moral natures. Let him go safely by. The divine Desdemona. <gasps> Where is she? She is that I speak of. Our great wow. captain's captain, wow. left in the conduct of the bold Iago. Oh, behold, the riches of the ship is come on shore. You men of Cyprus, let her have your knees. What tidings can you tell me of my lord? He is not yet arrived, nor know I aught but that he's well, and will be here shortly. A hark, a sail. See for the news. Good ancient, you are welcome. And welcome, mistress. Let it not gall your patience with Iago that I extend my manners. Tis my greeting. Mm, sir, if she were to give you as much of her lips as of her tongue she offers bestows on me, you'll have enough. <laughs> Alas, she has no speech. In faith too much. I find it still when I list to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Marry before your ladyship, I grant you. She puts her tongue a little in our heart and chides with thinking. <laughs> I have a little cause to say so. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You are pictures out of doors. Bells in your parlors. Hellcats in your kitchens. Saints in your injuries. Devils being offended. Players in your house library. And housewives in your beds. Call your police, slanderer. Nay, it is true, or else I am a Turk. You rise to play and go to bed to work. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not write my praise. No, let me not. What wouldst thou write of me, if thou shouldst praise me? Gentle lady, do not put me to it, for I am nothing if not critical. <laughs> I am not merry, though I do beguile the thing I am by seeming otherwise. Come. How would so crazy? I am about it, uh, but indeed my invention comes from my pate as bird lime does from freeze. It plucks out brains and all. <laughs>
But my news labors and thus she is delivered. If she be fair and wise, fairness and wit. The one's for use, the other use of it. <laughs> well praise. How if she be black and witty? If she be black and there to have a wit, she'll find a white that will her blackness fit. Worse and worse. How is fair and foolish? There's none yet was foolish that was fair, for even her folly helped her to an end. <laughs> These are old fond paradoxes to make fools laugh in the alehouse. <laughs> But what miserable praise hast thou for her that's fair and foolish? There's none so foul and foolish thereunto, but does foul pranks as fair and wise ones do. Oh, most lame and impotent conclusion. <laughs> that thou praisest the worst best. But what praise couldst thou bestow on a deserving woman? Indeed. One that in the authority of her merit did justly put on the vouch of very malice itself. She that was fair, yet never proud, had tongue at will, and yet was never loud. <laughs> she that never lacked gold, yet never went gay, fled from her wish, and yet said, Now I may. <laughs> She that being angered, her revenge being nigh, let her wrong stay and her displeasure fly. <laughs> she and wisdom never was so frail to change the cod's head for the salmon's tail. <laughs> she that could think, yet ne'er disclose her mind, see suitors following and not look behind. She was a white, if ever such white were... To do what? To suckle fools and chronicle small beer. Oh, what heavy ignorance! What say you, Cassio? Is he not a most profane and liberal counselor? He speaks home, madame. You may relish him more in the soldier than in the scholar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fair warrior! <laughs> my dear old fellow! It gives me wonder, great oh. my content to see you here before me, all oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest come such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death, and may the laboring bark climb hills of seas, Olympus high, and duck again as low as hells from heaven. If it were now to die, t'were now to be most happy, for I fear. My soul hath its content so absolute that not another likeness to this succeeds in unknown fate. The heavens forbid, but that our loves and comfort should increase even as our days do grow. Amen to that sweet powers. And this, and this, the greatest discords be that e'er our hearts shall make. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends, the wars are done! <laughs> 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 the friends are friends! <laughs> Come, Desdemona. I prattle out of fashion and I dote in my own comforts. You shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. Come. Thou meet me presently at the harbor. The lieutenant's night watch is upon the court of guard. First I must tell thee this. Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him? Why, tis not possible. May thy finger thus with thy soul be instructed? Her eye must be fed, and what delight shall she have to look on the devil? Her delicate tenderness finds itself abused, begins to heave the gore to disrelish and abhor the more. Very nature compels her to some second choice, and the woman hath found him already. I cannot believe that in her. She's full of most blessed condition. Blessed figs, the wine she drinks is made of grapes. If she had been blessed, she never would have loved the more. Didst thou not see her paddle with a palm of his hand? Didst thou mark that? Yes, that I did. But that was but courtesy. Lechery by this hand. An index of obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near, with their lips at their breaths, embraced together. Villainous thoughts, Rodrigo. When these mutualities so marshaled away, Hard at hand comes the master and main exercise, the incorporate conclusion. <laughs> but, sir, for your rule by me, 
watch you tonight for the command. I'll lay it upon you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio, either by speaking too loud or tainting his discipline or from what other course you please? Well, well, sir, he is rash and very sudden in color and may happily strike at you. <gasps> Provoke him that he may, and even out of that will I cause the displanting of Cassio. I will do this, if I can bring it to any opportunity. I want to. By and by, meet me at the Citadel. Very well. Adieu. This poor trash of Venice, whom I trash for his quick hunting, stand the putting on. I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip. Abuse him to the moor in the rank garb. Make the moor thank me, love me, and reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet even to madness. Just here, a confused, neighbor's plain face is never seen till used. Good Michael, look you to the god tonight. Let's teach ourselves that honorable stop, not to outsport discretion. Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding with my own personal eye will I look to it. Iago is most honest. Michael, good night. Come, Desdemona. The purchase made, the fruits are to ensue. The profits yet to come between me and you. Good night. Welcome, Iago. We must to the watch. Not this hour, Lieutenant. It is not yet turn of the clock. <laughs> Our general cast us thus early for the love of his Desdemona. Mm. So let us not therefore blame. He has not yet made wanton the night with her. She is sport for Jove. She is a most exquisite lady. Ooh, and I'll warrant her full of game. What an eye she has. An inviting eye. And yet methinks right modest. Mm. And when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? <laughs> she is indeed perfection. Well, happiness to their sheets. Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine here, and there are without a brace of cypress glance that would fain have a measure to the health of black a fellow. Not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy would invent some other custom of entertainment. Oh. They are my friends. But one cup, I'll drink for you. I have drunk but one cup tonight, and that was craftily qualified to, and Behold what innovation it makes here. I'm unfortunate in the infirmity. I dare not task my weakness with any more. What, man? Tis a night for revels. The gallant's design. Where are they? Here, without the door. I pray you call them in. I'll do it, but it dislikes me. I can fasten but one cup upon him. It will be as full of quarrel and offense as my young mistress's dog. <laughs> Here they come! Consequence to it, my dream, my boat sails freely, both with wind and sea. Hurrah! Michael Cassio! Oh, God, they've given me rounds already. Ah, they've been a good face. A little one, not past a pint as I am a soldier. The wine boy! Ho, ho! What? Let me the cannon clink, clink, clink! And let me the cannon clink, clink, clink! A soldier's a man, and life's but a span. Why, then let a soldier drink, clink, clink! Some more wine, boys! Excellent wine. Oh, God, an excellent song. Oh, I learned in England where indeed they are most potent in folly. <laughs> your Dane, your German, and your swag belly, and how they drink. Ho! Mm. Ah, nothing to your English. <laughs> <laughs> to the health of our general. Oh, I am for lieutenant, and I'll do you justice. <laughs> oh, sweet England! King Stephen was a worthy peer. His breeches cost him but a crown. <laughs> he held them sixpence all too dear. With that he called the tailor loud. <laughs> he was a white of high renown, and thou art but of low degree. Tis pride that pulls the country down. Then take that little cloak up out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> this is a more exquisite yeah. song than the last. Ah, you yeah. hear it again? Yeah. No. But I hold him to be unworthy of his place that does those things. Well, God's above all. And every souls must be saved, and every souls must not be saved. That's true, good lieutenant. For my own part, no offense to the general nor any men of quality. I hope to be saved. So do I too, lieutenant. Aye, but by your leave, not before me. The lieutenant is to be saved before the ancients. 
Let's have no more of this. Let's do our affairs. Do not think, gentlemen, that I've drunk. This is my ancient. This is my right hand. This is my left. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough, speak well enough, oh, or suit well enough. Very well, 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 well then. You must not think then that I am drunk. <laughs> to the platform, masters, come. Uh, Let us set the watch. You see this fellow that has gone before. He's a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction. You but see his vice. If you have to trust a fellow puts it in, we'll shake this island. What is he often thus? He's ever more the prologue to his sleep. It were well the general would put in mind of it. And tis great pity the noble Moor should has it such a place as his own second with one of an ingraft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the Moor. Not I for the spare island. I do love Cassia well and would do much to cure him of this evil. Help! Help! Ah, you rascal! What is the matter? A maid! Teach me my duty! I'll beat the maid into a twigging bottle! Beat me? Just a great rogue! Huh? Nay, Lieutenant, I pray you, hold your hand! Let uh, me go, or I'll knock you on the master! Come, come, you are drunk! Drunk! Oh, go away, I say, go on, try and mutiny! An eighth Lieutenant! Last gentleman! Help! Help! Lieutenant, sir! Montano, sir! Help! Master! Help! 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 I pray you pardon me, I cannot speak. Worthy Montano, you were wont be civil that you unlace your reputation thus and spend your rich opinion for the name of the night brawler? Give the answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer Iago can inform you while I spare speech, for something now offends me. Now by heaven, my blood begins its safer guides to rule, and passion having my best judgment colleague essays to lead the way. What? In a town of war yet wild, the people's hearts brimful of fear to manage private and domestic quarrel at night and on the guard of safety? Tis monstrous, Iago, who began it? If it be a fine or leagued in office, Thou dost deliver more or less than truth. Thou art no soldier. Touch me not so near. I had rather have this tongue be cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. And yet I persuade myself to speak the truth. Shall nothing wrong him. Thus it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him with determined its sword to execute upon him. Sir, this gentleman steps in to Cassio and entreats his paws, myself the fleeing fellow to pursue, lest by his clamor, as the so fell out, the town might fall in fright. He swept a foot outran my purpose, and when I came back, for this was brief, I found them close together at blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. No more of this matter can I report. But men are men the best sometimes forget, though Cassio did as a little wrong as men which like Thy honesty and love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Look, if my gentle love be not raised up, I'll make an example of thee. What's the matter? All's well now, sweeting. Come away to bed. Tis the soldier's life to have their balmy slumbers Waked with strife. Ah! What are you hurt, Lieutenant? I passed all surgery. Now, heaven forbid. Reputation. Reputation, reputation. Oh, I've lost my reputation. I've lost the immortal part of myself. 
What remains is best. I am an honest man. I thought you would receive some bodily wound. There's more sense in that than a reputation. What, man? There are ways to recover the general again. You are but cast in this mood a punishment more in policy than in malice. Sue him again, and he's yours. I would rather sue to be despised than to receive so good a commander with so slight, so street, and so drunken officer. Tell me you are too severe a moral. I will ask you for my place again. You shall tell me I'm a drunkard. Had I as many mouths as Hydra, such an answer would stop them all. I shall tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. She is a so free, so kind, so apt, so generous a disposition that she holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than is requested of her. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to splinter. And by my fortunes against any lay worth naming, this cry of your love shall grow stronger than before. You advise me well. The time's in the morning I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. Good night, Lieutenant. You must have a watch. Good night, honest Iago. And what's he that says I play the villain? When this advice I give is free. And honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again, for it is most easy the inclining as the owner to subdue in any honest suit. How, how am I then a villain to counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good? Divinity of hell. When devils will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. The whiles this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the more I pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust, and by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the more. Thus will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall mesh them all. Now, Rodrigo, I do follow here in the chase, not like a hound that hunts, but one that fills up the cry. My money is almost spent. I have been tonight exceedingly well cudgeled, and I think the issue will be I shall have so much experience for my pains, and so, with no money at all and a little more wit, return again to Venice. How poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft, and wit depends upon diligent time. It does not go well. <laughs> Cassio has beaten me. A vow by that small ah! wit hath cashiered Cassio. I can take myself a while. <coughs> by the mask is morning. Pleasure and action make the hours seem short. Tire thee a while, do with our ability. Away, I say, you shall more of this hereafter. Nay, get thee gone! Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself to draw the moor apart a while and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. Tell not device by coldness and delay. I'll take my leave. Why? Stay, you can me speak. Madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease. Unfit for mine own purposes. Well, do your discretion. Huh. Like not that. What dost thou say? Nothing, my lord. I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord. Now, sure, I cannot think it that he should steal a piece of guilty light seeing you coming. I do believe twas he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here. A man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio. Good my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, this present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest face. I pray thee, hold him back. Went he hence now? Aye. Sooth, so humble that he hath left far 
part of his grief with me to suffer with him. But love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall it be shortly? The sooner, sweet, for you. Shall it be tonight, at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night? Or Tuesday morn? On Tuesday noon or night? On Wednesday morn? I prithee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. And say he's penitent. And yet, this trespass in our common reason, save that they say the wars must make examples out of their best, is not almost a fault to incur a private check. When shall he come? Tell me, O oh fellow, I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny or stand so mammering on. What? Michael Cassio, that came a wooing with you, and so many a time when I have spoken of you dispraisingly, have taken your part? To have so much to do to bring him in. Trust me, I could do much. Prithee, no more. I will deny thee nothing. Let him come when he will. Why, this is not a boon. Tis as I should entreat you, wear your gloves, or feed on nourishing dishes, or keep you warm, or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise, and difficult weight, and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing, whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this to leave me, but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona, I'll come to thee straight. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, I am obedient. Excellent wretch, perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Ado? Did Michael Cassio, when he wooed my lady, know of your love? He did from first to last. Why dost thou ask? So for satisfaction, my thought no further harm. Why of thy thought? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed, I indeed discernst thou aught in that is not honest? Honest, my lord. <laughs> honest, I honest. My lord, for all I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. By heaven he echoes me. Thou dost mean something. If thou dost love me, show me thy thoughts. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost, for thou art full of love and honesty, and waste thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore, these stops of thine frighten me the more. Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think that he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or if they be not, that they might seem none. Certain, men should be what they seem. Why then, I think Cassio is an honest man. <coughs> Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. I do beseech you, though I perchance am vicious in my guess, as I confess it is my nature's plague to spy into abuses, and oft my jealousies shapes faults that are not. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor for my manhood, honest your wisdom, to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name in man or woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash, or something, nothing. Was mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands, but he that filters for me my good name robs me of that which enriches him not and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thoughts. You cannot if my heart were in your hands, nor shall not while tis in my custody. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat and feeds on. Why? Why is this? Thinkest thou I'd make a lie of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt. 
for she had eyes and chose me. No, Yago, I'll see before I doubt, and when I doubt, prove, and on the proof there is no more but this, away at once with love or jealousy. I'm glad of it, and now I shall have reason to show you the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Just as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof, but look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Dost their best say. conscience is not to leave it undone, but to keep it unknown. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father in marrying you, and when she seemed to shake in fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. Why go to them? He thought it was witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I, I hope you do beseech you of your pardon for too much love. No, I am bound to thee forever. You see this hath little dashed of spirits. Not a jot, not a jot. In faith, I fear it has. I, I hope you will take what is spoke that comes from my love. I do see your mood. I, I pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issue, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, you should. My speech should fall into such vile success as my thoughts aim not at. Cassie is my worthy friend. My lord, I see you're moved. No, not much moved. I do not think, but Desdemona is honest. Long live she so. And long live you to think so. And yet how nature erring from itself? All right, there is the point for Ash to be bold with you, not to affect many proposed matches of her own time, complexion, and degree. Oh, one may smell such a will, those foul, rank thoughts unnatural. I beg your pardon, I do not in position distinctly speak of her. Though I may fear her will recoiling to her better judgment, may fail to match you with her country forms and happily repent. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more, than he unfolds. My lord, I humbly do beseech you of your pardon to scan this thing no further. Leave it to time. Let me be thought too busy in my fears, as I have worthy cause to fear I am and hold her free. I humbly do beseech you. Fear not my government. Once more, I take my leave. This fellows of exceeding honesty, and knows all qualities with the learned spirit of human dealings. O oh, curse of marriage, that she call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. If she be false, so then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello? Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Nay, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour it will be well. Your napkin is too little. Let it alone. Come. I'll go with you. I am very sorry that you are not well. I am glad I found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward hus husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. My lady so loves the token that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and to talk to. I'll have the work taken out and give it to Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. Come now. What do you hear alone? Do not you try. I have a thing for you. Thing for me? It is a common thing. Huh. You have a foolish wife. <laughs> is that all? What would you give me now for the same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why that the morphous gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal? Stole it from her. Oh, no, faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I being here to cut. Oh, here it is. You wench. Give it me. 
What will you do with it that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Why? What's that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run back when she shall lack it. But not like no one on it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles as light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in themselves poisons. Which at first are scarce to distaste, but will act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulfur. I did say so. Look where he comes. Hannah, General, no more of that. Avaunt! Be gone! Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear tis better to be much abused than but to know to little. How now, my lord? What sense have I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, I fought it not, it harmed not me. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. I'm very sorry to hear this. I had been happy as the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so I had nothing known. Oh, now, forever, farewell! Farewell, the tranquil mind. Farewell, content. Farewell, the plumage troop. Farewell, the big wars that make ambition want you. Farewell, farewell, a fellow's occupation's gone. Is it possible, my lord? Villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore. Be sure of it, or by the worth of man's eternal soul, thou hast better have been born a dog than to answer my wicked wrath. So come to this. Make me to see it, or at least so prove it, so the probation bear no hinge, nor look to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. My noble lord. If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more, abandon all remorse. Call the head, powers accumulate, do deeds to make heavy weak, all earth to me, for nothing can come out to damnation as greater than that. Oh, Christ, have you been me? God be with you, take my office. Thank you. Whew. Oh, cruel world, did no denotable to me. Direct arms is not safe. I thank you for this prophet, and from hence I love no prince that's love for its defense. Nay, stay. Thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise. Honesty's a fool that loses and it works for. By the world, I think my wife be honest and think she is not. I think that thou art just and think that thou art not. I'll have some proof. Would I were satisfied. You would be satisfied? Would, nay, I will. And may, but how? How satisfied will you, the supervisor, gross to gape on, behold her topped? Death and damnation, oh! What then? How then, what shall I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this where they as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as fools, as gross as ignorance, made drunk. Yes. Yet, yet, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you may yet have it. Give me a living reason. She is disloyal. I do not like the office. Since I have entered into this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled by a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he grip and wring my hand and cry, Oh, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, and laid his leg over my thigh, and sighed, and kissed, and cry, cursed fate that gave thee to the moor! Oh, monstrous, monstrous! Nay, but this was but his dream. I'll tear her to pieces! Nay, but be wise, yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me about this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one, t'was my first gift. I know not that, but... Such a handkerchief, I swear it was your wife's that I today see Cassia wipe his beard with. If it be that. If it be that or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Hey! 
revenge. Now do I see, tis true. Look here, Yago. The wayward husband has a hundred times wooed me to steal it. My lady so loves the token that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and to talk to. I'll have the work taken out and give it to Yago. What he will do with it, heaven knows not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. I'm out. What do you hear alone? Do not you try. I have a thing for you. Thing for me? It is a common thing. Huh. You have a foolish wife? <laughs> is that all? What would you give me now for the same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the morphous gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal? I stole it from her. Oh, no, faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I being geared to cut. Here it is. You wench. Give it me. What will you do with it that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Why? What's that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall laugh it. There's not a no one on it. I have use for it. Go. Leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles as light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in themselves poisons, which at first are scarce to distaste, but will act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulfur. I did say so. Look where he come. Hannah, General, no more of that. Avaunt! Be gone! Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear tis better to be much abused than but to know to little. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, I fought it not, it harmed not me. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. I'm very sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so I had nothing known. Oh, now, forever, farewell! Farewell, the tranquil mind! Farewell, content! Farewell, the plumish troop! Farewell, the big wars that make ambition want you! Farewell, farewell, Othello's occupation's gone! Is it possible, my lord? Villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore! Be sure of it, or by the worth of man's eternal soul, thou hast better have been born a dog than to answer my wicked wrath! So come to this! Make me to see it, or at least so prove it, so the probation bear no hinge, nor look to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life! My noble lord! If thou not slander her and torture me, never pray more, abandon all remorse, power to pay, power to accumulate, do deeds to me, cutting weak, all those to me, for nothing can come out of damnation as greater than that! Christ! Oh, I can me! God be with you, take mine office! Thank you. Whew. Oh, the world did no dinner will to be directed on is not safe. I thank you for this prophet, and from hence I love no prince that's love for its defense. Nay, stay. Thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise. Honesty is a fool that loses and it works for. By the world, I think my wife be honest and think she is not. I think that thou art just and think that thou art not. I'll have some proof. Would I were satisfied. You would be satisfied? Would, nay, I will! And may, but how? How satisfied will you, the supervisor, grow to gape on, behold her topped? Death and damnation, ah! Oh. What then? How then? What shall I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this really as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as fools, as gross as ignorance, made drunk. Yeah. Yet, yet, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you may yet have it. Give me a living reason. She is disloyal. I do not like the office. Since I have entered into this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled by a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, 
would he grip and wring my hand and cry, oh sweet creature, and then kiss me hard as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips and laid his leg over my thigh and sighed and kissed and cried cursed fate that gave thee to the moor oh monstrous monstrous think but this was but his dream i'll tear her to pieces nay but be wise yet we see nothing done she may be honest yet tell me about this have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one, t'was my first gift. I know, not that, but such a handkerchief. I swear it was your wife's that I today see Cassia wipe his beard with. If it be that. If it be that or any that was hers. It speaks against her with the other proofs. doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wronged Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse what bloody business ever. I greet thy love, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within these three days let me not hear thee say that Cassio is still alive. My friend is dead. It is done at your request. Come away with me apart. Now art thou my lieutenant. I am your own forever. from liberty, fasting and prayer, much castigation, exercise, devout. For here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. 
Tis a good hand, a fright one. You may indeed say so, for t'was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave thee. I have it not about me. Not? No, indeed, my lord. That is a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her while she kept it to make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathed and his spirit should hunt after new fancies. She, dying, gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wive, I give it her. I did so, and take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye. To lose it, or make gift of it, were such perdition as nothing else could match. Indeed, is it true? Most veritable. Therefore, look to it well. Then would to God that I had never seen it. Huh? Wherefore? Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? Is it out of the way? Heaven bless us. Say you. It is not lost, but what an if it were. How? I say it is not lost. Fetch me the handkerchief. Let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. Come, come, you'll never meet a more sufficient man. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief. In soup, you are to blame. The handkerchief. Away. Is not this man jealous? I ne'er saw this before. Sure, there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Not a year or two shows us a man. They are all but stomachs, and we all but food. To eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. <laughs> Look you, Cassie and my husband. There's no other way to she must do it. Lo, the happiness, go in and put you in her. How now, good Cassio? What's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech you that by a virtuous means I may again exist, and be a member in his love whom I with all the office of my heart, do entirely honor. I would not be delayed. If my offense be of such mortal kind, that nor my services past, nor my present sorrow can ransom me into his love again, so shall I clothe me in a forced content, and shut myself up in some other cause, to fortune's arms. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune. My lord is not my lord, nor should I know him were he in favor as in humor altered. You must a while be patient. What I can do I will, and more I will than for myself I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? Even hence but now, certainly in strange and quietness. And may be angry. I have seen a cannon would have blown his rank into the air. Like a devil from the very arm puffed his own brother. How can he be angry? Something a moment, then I will go and meet with him. This matter in it indeed, if he be angry. I prithee, do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him hath huddled his clear spirit. And in such cases men's natures wrangle with inferior things when great ones are their object. Tis even so. Pray heaven if you state matters, as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning me. Alas the day, I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous where they are jealous. 
It's a monster. He got it from itself. Born on itself. Heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Lady, amen. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk here about. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it to my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. Thank <laughs> you, friend Cassio. What makes you from home? How is it with you, my most fair Bianca? If fate, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was coming to your lodging. What keeps you a week away? <laughs> Seven days and nights, eight score, eight hours, and lovers absent hours. Oh, Pardon me, sweet Bianca. I have this while with leaden thoughts been pressed, but I shall in a more continuate time strike off this score of absence. Sweet Bianca, take me this work out. Cassio, oh, yes. To the thoughts absence I now feel the cause. Is it come to this? Well, well, well. Go to, woman. Throw your vile guesses in the devil's teeth from whence you have them. You are jealous now that this is from some mistress? Some remembrance? No. A good troth, Bianca. Why, well, whose is it? I know not, sweet. I found it in my chambers. I like the work well. Ere it be demanded, it's like enough it will, I'd have it copied. Take it and do it. And leave me for this time. Leave you where for? Well, I do attend here on the general and think it no addition nor my wish to have him see me here woman. Why, I pray you. <laughs> not that I love you not. But that you don't love me. Come, on, I pray you, bring me on the way a little while and say I shall see you soon at night. <laughs> Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here, but I'll see you soon. Tis very well. I must be circumstanced. Well, you think so? Think so, Yago. But if I give my wife a handkerchief. What then? Why, then, my lord, tis hers, and being hers, I think she may bestow it upon any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? What if I had said I had seen him do you wrong, or had heard him say... Hath he said anything? He hath, my lord, but be you well assured, no more than he'll unswear. What hath he said? Faith that he did... What? I know not what he did. What? Lie. With her? With her on her, what you will. Lie with her, lie on her. We say lie on her when they be lie her. That's fulsome. Handkerchiefs, confessions, handkerchiefs. <laughs> We're gone, my medicine work. Thus credulous fools are caught in many chaste and worthy name, all guiltless even thus meet reproach. How now, my lord? How now, general? A fellow! How now, Cassio? What's the matter? My lord has fallen to an epilepsy. This is the second fit he had one yesterday. You robbed him about the temple. No! Forbear! The lethargy must have his quiet course. If not, he foams at mouth and by and by falls into savage madness. See, he stirs. Do you withdraw yourself a while? He will recover straight. When he is gone, I will on great occasion speak with you. How is it, General? Have you not hurt your head? Dost thou mock me? I mock you? No, by heaven. He hath confessed it. Well, you were here, overwhelmed in your grief. Cassio came hither. I shifted him away and made good excuse upon your ecstasy. Bade him anon return here to speak with me, the which he promised. Do you but encave yourself, and mark the fleers, the jibes, and notable scorns that dwell in every region of his face, for I shall make him tell the tale anew. Where, how, how oft, how long ago, when he happened is again to cope your wife. I say, but mark his gesture. Marry, patience. Now will I question Cassio of Bianca. He, when he hears of her, cannot refrain from the excess of laughter, as he shall smile. A fellow shall go mad. How is it now, Lieutenant? Well, the worse is that you give me the addition, whose wont even kills me. Why, Desdemona, well, and you're sure on. Now, if this suit lay in Bianca's power, how quickly <laughs> should you speak? Alas, poor caitiff. I never knew woman to love man so. Alas, poor rogue. I thank you, Faith. She loves me. <laughs> Do you hear, Cassio? She puts it out that you shall marry her. <laughs> Do you intend it? I marry her. 
What a customer. Oh, pretty. Bear some charity to my wit. Do not think it so unwholesome. <laughs> Faith, the cry goes out. You shall marry her. This is the monkey's own giving out. She is persuaded I will marry her out of her own love and flattery, not out of my promise. <laughs> she was here even now. She haunts me in every place. I was the other day talking on the sea bank with certain Venetians when thither comes the bubble. And by this hand she falls me thus about the neck and so hangs and lolls and weeps upon me, <laughs> so hails and pulls me. Well, I must leave her company. Before me, look where she comes. Oh, Tis such another fit you marry a perfume on. <laughs> what do you mean by this haunting of me? Let the devil in his damn haunt you. What did you mean by this same handkerchief that you gave me even now? I was a likely fool to take it. And I should take out the work on it. A likely piece of work that you should find in your chamber and not know from where it came. This is a mink's token. And I'm going to take out the work on it. <laughs> there, give it your hobby horse wheresoever it came. I'll take out no work on it. How now, sweet Bianca? How now, how now? And come to supper tonight, you will. And will you not come when you're next prepared for After her, after her. Faith, I must. She'll rail in the street else. Well, will you stop there tonight? Faith, I intend so. Ah, chance I may see you, for I would very fain speak with you. Pretty, come, will you? Go to, say no more. How shall I murder him, Yago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? A fine woman, a fair woman. A sweet woman. Nay, you must forget that. Oh, I'll tear her to pieces. Cuckold me. Oh, I let her rot and perish and be damned tonight, for she shall not live. My heart is turned to stone. I strike it and it hurts my hand. The pity of it, Yago. Oh, the pity Nay, of it, Yago. Nay, that's not your way. I'll tear her all to pieces! Oh, oh cuckold me! It's foul in her. With mine officer! That's fouler! Oh, get me some poison tonight! This night, Yago, I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again! This night, Yago! Do not with poison. Strangle her in her bed, even the bed she hath contaminated. Very good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. For Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall know more by midnight. Excellent good. What trumpet is this day? I think from Venice, sure. Since Ludovico come from the Duke and see your wife is with him. The Duke and Senators of Venice. With all my heart. Say, you were the general. I kiss the instrument of their pleasures. And what's the news, good cousin Lodovico? I'm glad to see you, senor. Welcome to Cyprus. I uh, thank you. Uh, how does Lieutenant Cassio? Lives, sir. Cousin, there's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach. But you shall make all well. Are you sure of that, my lord? This fail you not to do as he will. He did not call. He's busy in the paper. Is there a division betwixt my lord and Cassio? A most unhappy one. I would do much to atone him for the love I bear to Cassio. Fire and brimstone! My lord? Are you wise? What? Is he angry? Maybe the letter moved him, for as I think they do command him home, defeating Cassio and his government. Trust me, I am glad on it. Indeed! My lord? I am glad to see you, man. Why, sweet Othello. Devil! Ah! I have not deserved this. This would not be believed in Venice, though I should swear I saw it. Tis very much. Make her amend. She weeps. Oh, devil, devil. Oh, that the earth would teem with women's tears. Each dock she falls would be a crocodile. Out of my sight. Oh. I will not stay to offend you. Surely, an obedient lady, I do beseech your lordship, call her back. Mistress! My lord? Hmm. 
What would you with her, sir? Who I, my lord? You did wish that I make her turn, and turn, and yet turn again. And, sir, she can weep. <laughs> sir, weep. Yes. She's obedient, sir. Very obedient. Proceed you in your tears. Concerning this, sir, I will obey the mandate. A well-painted passion. Get you away. Anon, I'll hand over you. And I will obey the mandate and return to Venice. Hence, avant. Cassio can have my place. And, sir, I do entreat that we may sup together tonight. Welcome to Cyprus. Goats and monkeys. <laughs> is this the noble Moor whom our full senate call all in all sufficient? Is this the nature whom passion could not shake, whose solid virtue, the shot of accident nor dart of chance, could neither graze nor pierce? He's much changed. Are his wits safe? Is he not light of brain? He's that he is. I may not breathe my censure what he might be. What? Strike his wife! Alas, alas, it is not honesty in me to speak what I have seen and know. You shall observe him. And his action shall so denote him, I may save my speech. I, I am sorry that I am deceived in him. You, you have seen nothing then. Nor ever heard your other disrespect. You have not seen Cassio and she together? But then I saw no harm. And then I heard each syllable that breath made up between them. What did they never whisper? Never, my lord. Nor send you out of the way? Never. To fetch her fan, her glove, her mask, nor nothing? Never, my lord. That's strange. I hate to hurt my lord. To wager she is honest, lay down my soul at stake. If you think other, remove your thought. Death abuse your bosom. If any wretch have put this in your head, let heaven requite it with the serpent's curse. For if she be not honest, Chaste and true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foul of slander. Bid her come hither. Go. She says enough, yet she's a simple bard that cannot say as much. This is a subtle whore, a closet lock and key of villainous secrets, and yet she'll kneel and pray. I've seen her do it. Lord, what is your will? Pray, come hither. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look in my face. Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why, what art thou? Your wife, my lord! Your true and loyal wife! Come, swear it! Damn thyself, swear thou art honest! Heaven doth truly know it! Heaven doth truly know thou art false as hell! To whom, my lord? With whom? How am I false? Oh, Desdemona, away, away, away! Alas, the heavy day! Why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If haply you, my father, do suspect an instrument of this you're calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, why, I have lost him too. Had it pleased heaven to try me with affliction, had they rained all kinds of sores and shames on my bare head, I should have known in some place of my soul a drop of patience. But alas, where I have garnered up my heart, where either I must live or bear no life, the fountain from the which my current runs or else dries up to be discarded thence, or keep it as a cistern for foul toads to not engender in? Turn thy complexion there, patience, thou young and rose-lipped cherubim. I there look grim as hell. 
I hope my noble lord esteems me honest. As summer flies are in the shambles that quicken with the winds blowing. O oh, thou weed, who art so lovely and smell so sweet that the sense aches with thee, would thou hast ne'er been born! Alas, what ignorant sin have I committed? Was this fair paper, this goodly book, written to write horror upon? What committed? Impudent strumpet! Oh, by heaven, you do me wrong! Art thou not a strumpet? No, as I am a Christian! What, not a whore? No, as I shall be saved! Is it possible? Oh, heaven, forgive us! I cry thee mercy then. I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. Mistress, you, I, you, that hath the office opposite to St. Peter and keep the gate of hell. We have done our course. Here's money for your pains. I pray you turn the key and keep our counsel. Alas, does this gentleman conceive? How do you, madam? How are you, sweet lady? Pray, half asleep. Good madam, what is the matter with my lord? With who? With my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? He that is your sweet lady. I have none. Do not talk to me, Amelia. I cannot weep, nor answer have I none but what should go by water. Prithee, tonight, lay on my bed my wedding sheets. Remember, and call thy husband hither. There's a change of deep. Tis meet I should be used so. Very meet. How have I been behaved that he should stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? It was your pleasure, madam. How is it with you? I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with gentle means and easy tasks. He may have chid me so, for in good faith, I am a child to chiding. What's the matter, lady? Last year, my lord hath so behoard her, through such desperate and heavy terms upon her as true hearts cannot bear. To my that name, Iago. What name, fair lady? Such as she says my lord did say I was. He called her whore. Beggar his drink and not have laid such terms upon his couch. Why did he so? I do not know. I am sure I am none such. Do not weep. Do not weep, but alas the day. I will be hanged. If some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue, some Cosening slave, to get some office, hath not devised the slander. I'll be hanged else. Why, there is no such man, it is impossible. If any such there be, heaven pardon him. A halter pardoned him, and held on his bones. Why should he call her whore? Who keeps her company? What place, what time, what form, what likelihood? The more stop abused by some most villainous name, some base, notorious name, some scurvy fellow. Oh, heaven, that such companions dealt so fold, in every honest hand a whip, to lash the rascals naked through the world, even from the east to the west. You speak within door. Oh, good Iago, what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how I lost him. Here I kneel, if e'er my will to trespass against his love, Either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that I do not yet and ever did and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement. Love him dearly, comfort forswear me. Unkindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never. Take my love. I'm afraid.
longer you'd be content. Tis but his humor. He, some business of the state does him offense, and he does chide with you. It's for no other. Tis but so, I warn you. Ah, these instruments summon the supper. The messengers of Venice stay the meat. Go in, and weep not. All things shall be well. Rodrigo? I do not find that thou dealst justly with me. What in the contrary? Every day thou dappest me with some device, Iago, and rather, as it seems to me now, keepst from me all conveniency than suppliest me with the least advantage of hope. I will indeed no longer endure it, nor am I yet persuaded to put up in peace what already I have foolishly suffered. You hear me, Rodrigo? Faith, I have heard too much, for your words and performances are no kin together. You charge me most unjustly. With naught but truth! I have wasted myself out of my means. The jewels you have had from me to deliver to Desdemona would half have corrupted a votarist. You have told me she hath received them and returned me comforts and expectations of sudden respect and acquaintance, but I find none. Well, go to, very well. Very well? Go to? I cannot go to, man, nor tis not very well. Nay, I think it is scurvy and begin to find myself fogged in it. Very well. I tell you, tis not very well. I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she will return me my jewels, I will give over my suit and repent my unlawful solicitation. If not, assure yourself. I will seek satisfaction of you. You have said nothing. I said nothing but what I protest intendment of doing. <laughs> well. Now I see there's metal in thee, and even from the instant to build on thee, a better opinion than ever before. Give me your hand, Rodrigo. Thou hast taken against me a most just exception. But yet, I protest I have dealt most directly in thy affair. It hath not appeared! Mary, I grant you, it hath not appeared. And your suspicions not without wit and judgment. But, Rodrigo, and thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have more reason to believe now than ever I need. Purpose, courage, and valor. This night prove it. If thou the next night following enjoy not Desdemona, then take me from this world of treachery and devise engines for my life. <sighs> well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? Sir, there is a special commission come from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Why then, Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice? No, no. He goes into Mauritania and takes away with him the fair Desdemona. Oh. Unless his abode be lingered here by some accident, wherein none can be so determinate as the removing of Cassio. How do you mean? Removing of him. Why, right, by right. making him incapable of a fellow's place. Knocking out his brains. And that you would have me to do? Ah, you could dare to yourself a prophet and a right. What? Man, stand not amazed at it, but go along with me. I will show you such a necessity in his death. You shall think yourself bound to put it on. I will hear further reason for this. And you shall be satisfied. He says he will return incontinent. He hath commanded me to go to bed and bade me to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It was his bidding. Therefore, good Emilia, give me my nightly wearing and adieu. We must not now displease him. I would do another scene. So would not I. My 
love doth so approve him that even his stubbornness, his checks, his frowns, pretty and pinny, have grace and favor in them. I believe those sheets you bade me on the bed. All's one. How foolish are our minds! If I do die before thee, pretty, shroud me in one of those same sheets. Come, come, you talk. My mother had a maid called Barbary. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of willow, an old thing twas, but it expressed her fortune, and she died singing it. That song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do but to go and hang my head all at one side and sing it like poor Barbary. Pretty, dispatch. Shall I go fetch her night gown? No. Unpin me here. The poor so sad by a That's not next. Hawk, who is it that knocks? It's the wind. I call my love false love. Hard work said he then. Sing willow, willow, willow. If I call with more women, then you'll catch with more men. So get thee gone. Mine eyes do itch. How that bode weeping is neither here nor there. These men, these men, dost thou think in conscience, tell me, Amelia, that there be women who abuse their husbands in such gross kind? There be some such, no question. Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? Why would not you? No. Why this heavenly light? No, I neither, by this heavenly light. I might do it as well in the dark. <laughs> Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? The world's a huge thing. It's a great price for a small vice. <laughs> in troth, I think thou wouldst not. In troth, I think I should. And then do it when I had done. Mary, I would not do such a thing for a joint ring, nor for measures of law, nor for gowns, heavy coats, caps, nor any heavy exhibition. But 
the whole world. Why could we not make her husband a cuckold to make him a monarch? I should venture purgatory for it. <laughs> I do not believe there is any such woman. Yes, a dozen. But I do think it is their husband's fault that their wives do fail. Say they slack their duties, or else break out in peevish jealousies. Why, we have galls, and while we have some grace, yet we have some revenge. <laughs> but our husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have pelts for both sweet and sour, as husbands have. Have we not affections and desires for sport and frailty, as men have? Then let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do. Their ills instruct us so. Good night. Good night. Heaven me such uses send, not to pick bad from bad, but by bad men. Here, stand behind this bolt. Straight will he come. Where did I go to rape your bear? Put it home. Be near at hand. I may miscarry it. Here at thy hand, be bold. Make thy stand. I have no great devotion to the deed, and yet he hath given me satisfying reasons. Tis but a man gone. Forth my sword he dies. I know his gate, tis he. Gianna, 
these bloody accidents must excuse my manners and so neglected you. I'm glad to see you. How do you, Cassio? Oh, a chair! A chair! Rodrigo! He, sir, he! Oh, that's well said. Some good man, bear him carefully from hence. I'll fetch the general surgeon. So you, Mr. Save your labors. Cassio, he that lies slain here was my dear friend. What malice was between you? None in the world, nor do I know the man. I look you pale at that. Oh, bear him out in the air. Stay, gentlemen. Look you pale, mistress. Hey, observe the gashness of her eye. Do you see, gentlemen? Observe her well. Nay, guiltiness will speak. Her tongues are out of use. Cassio was here set upon in the dark by Roderigo and fellows that escaped. He's nearly slain. Roderigo dead. Who has the gentleman? Who has the Cassio? This is the fruit of whoring! Brithy, Amelia, go know of Cassio where he supped tonight. What? Shake you at that? He supped with me last night, therefore I shake not. Uh, did he so? I charge you, go with me. Fie! Fie upon thee, strumpet! I am no strumpet! But his life is honest as you that thus abuse me. Not as I! Fire upon thee! Dirty! <laughs> Nay, kind gentlemen. Let's go see poor Cassio dressed. Come, mistress, you must tell us another tale. Emilia, run you to the citadel. Let my lord lady know what hath happened. Will you go on, I pray? This is the night that makes me or for does me quite. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chase stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow as smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me, but once put out thy light, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. <coughs> ah, balmy breath, thou dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more, one more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee, and love thee after. One more, and this the last. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. Who's there? Othello? I, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? I, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled, unyet, to heaven or grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what do you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. Heaven forfend. I would not kill thy soul. Oh, talk you of killing. Aye, I do. And heaven have mercy on me. With all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. And yet I fear you. For you are fatal then when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear, I know not, since guiltiness I know not. But yet, 
I feel, I fear. Think on thy sin. They are loads I bear to you. Aye, and for that thou diest. That death's so natural that kills for loving. Alas, why gnaw you so your nether lip? Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents. But yet I hope, I hope, they do not point on me. Peace and be still. <laughs> I will so. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No! By my life and soul! Send for the man and ask him! Sweet soul, take heed, take heed of perjury! Thou art on thy deathbed! I, but not yet to die! Yes, presently! Oh, then heaven have mercy on me! I say amen. Then have you mercy too! I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio, but with such general warranty of heaven as I might love. I never gave him token. By heaven I saw the handkerchief in his hand. I found it then. I never gave it him. Send for him hither, let him confess the truth. He hath confessed it. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. They will not say so. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken order for it. My fear interprets. What? Is he dead? Alas! He is betrayed and I undone. Weepest thou for him to my face? Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Oh, oh, kill me tomorrow. Not dead, not yet quite dead. I that am cruel and yet merciful, I would not have thee linger in thy pain. So soon. Oh, my lord, my lord. What? What? I would see the word of heaven, my lord. Who's there? Tis Amelia, by and by. Good my lord, yonder saw murder spell. What is the matter now? But now, my lord. It is the very error of the moon. She comes more nearer earth than is wont and makes men mad. Cassio, my lord, has killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo. Cassio killed? Rodrigo killed? No, Cassio's not killed. Cassio not killed? Then murder's out of tune and sweet revenge grows harsh. Falsely, falsely murder! Alas, what part is that? What? Oh, what? In the last that was my lady's voice. Why, how should she be murdered? What? Who knows? You heard her say herself, it was not I. Yes, and so she said. I must needs report the truth. She's like a liar gone to burning hell. Twas I that killed her. Oh, Who are you? And you, the bladder devil. 
Oh, she turned to folly, and she was a whore. Thou dost belot her, and thou art a devil. She was false as water. Thou art rash as fire to say she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Cassio did top her, as thy husband else. Oh, that I were damned beneath all death and hell, but that I did proceed upon just grounds to this extremity. Thy husband knew it all. My husband? Thy husband. But she was false to wedlock. I with Cassio, nay, had she been true. My husband? Thy husband, an honest man he is, t'was he that told me first. It's he that hates the slime that sticks to filthy deeds. Thy husband. My husband. Thy husband, dost thou not understand the word, woman, thy husband? If he say so, may his pernicious soul rest half a brain a day. He lies to the heart. He was too fond of his most filthy bargain. Do thy worst. This deed of thine is no more worthy heaven than thou wast worthy her. Peace and be still. Oh, God. Oh, God. His ignorance is dirt. Thou hast done a deed. Care not for thy sword. I will make thee known though I lost twenty lives. Help! Help, ho! Help! The more have killed thy mistress! Murder! 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 How now, General? Are you coming with us? You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What's the matter? Just prove this, villain, if thou beest man. He told me that holdest from his wife were false. I know thou didst not. Who art not such a villain? For my heart is full. I told him what I thought and told no more than he himself found to be apt and true. But did you ever say that she was false? I did. And you told a lie. An odious lie. A damned lie. Upon my soul, a lie. A wicked lie. Did she falls with Cassio? Did you say with Cassio? I think with Cassio, mistress, go to charm your tongue. I will not charm my tongue. I am bound to speak. My mistress, he lies murdered in her bed. And your reports have set the murder on. Nay, stand not, masters. It is true indeed. Villainy, villainy, villainy. I think upon it, I think. I smelt. Villainy. What are you mad? I tried to get you home. Dear gentlemen, let me have leave to speak. It is proper I obey him, but not now. Perchance, Iago, I will never go home. Oh. Oh. Nay. Oh. Lay thee down and roar, for thou hast killed the sweetest innocent that e'er did lift up eye. Oh, she was foul, ask thy husband else. Tis true, but that I did proceed upon just grounds to this extremity. Oh, she with Cassio hath the act of shame a thousand times committed. I saw it in his hand, and she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. A handkerchief, an antique token my father gave my mother. Oh, heavenly, oh, heavenly powers. Be wise and get you home. I will not. I do more. The handkerchief thou speakest of, I did find my fortune and give it my husband. He begged me to steal it. You are a whore. She gave it Cassio. No, alas, I found it. Not to give it my husband. Don't thou liest! Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? Oh, 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 the woman falls! Surely he hath killed his wife! I, 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 Let him not pass the rat kill him! I'll act in the same villa for tis a damn slave! Most unfortunate man. That's he that was Othello. Here I am. Where is that viper? Bring the villain forth. (laughs) 
I look down at his feet, but that is a fable. If thou beest a devil, I cannot kill thee. <laughs> I plead, sir, but not kill. I would not have thee live, for in my sense tis happiness to die. This wretch hath part confessed his villainy. Did you and he consent in Cassio's death? I. Dear General, I never gave you cause. I do believe it, and I ask your pardon. Will you, I pray, demand this demi-devil why he has thus ensnared my soul and body? Uh, demand me nothing. <laughs> but you know, you know, from this time forward I never will speak word. <laughs> Not to pray! Torment will off your lips! Do the best! Uh, you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off, and Cassio rules in Cyprus. Come, bring him away! Soft you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. Of one who subdued eyes, Albeit unused to the melting mood, drop tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinal gum. Set you down this, and say besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and turbaned Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog, and smoke him thus. I kiss thee, ere I kill thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. I did fear, but he thought he had no weapon. Well, he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dog, more fell than anguish, hunger of the sea. Look upon the tragic loading of his bed. This is thy work. The object poison sight, let it be hid. To you, Lord Governor, remains the censure of this hellish villain. The time, the place, the torture, I'll enforce it. Myself was straight aboard into the state, this heavy act with heavy heart relate. 